Welcome to Prophetic Mothers. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more uploads. Give me love. I submit this song, don't worry. For your sake, I go go church. Now he's not going to church because he's looking for God. And if Olaka is not in church that day, he'll go find Jane. So is that a craving, an obsession, or an addiction? What's that? It's a craving. He's just craving for lack of For lack of no day, go shift. Praise God. Okay. But if I came to you and I began to sing a song like, All of me loves all of you. Love your curves and all your edges. All your perfect imperfections. I give you all of me. You give your all to me. Here's the problem. You're my end and my beginning. Even when I'm losing wind, you give me all of you. Yeah. And I give you all of me. What's that? It's an obsession. The guy is obsessed. What does he mean by you are my end and my beginning? How? Yeah. All right. If I came to your face and I began to sing, Kaya now. I got to have Kaya man. <laughs> Need to have Kaya now. For the rain is falling. Oh. <laughs> Kaya now. Me got to have Kaya man. I got to have Kaya now. Yeah, for the rain is far. What's that? It's addiction. What is Kaya? It's ganja. It's marijuana. I ray, I and I. <laughs> okay. So. Because when you speak about addictions, people think about, immediately think about the guy on the street whose hair is dada already, and he's going around walking on air. <laughs> That's who you think the addict is. But I, I want to bring it home this morning. I want to revamp your brain. So that you go think I'm a gain. Mm? What is an addiction? An addiction is you forming a habit, and the habit turns around and forms you. Is the easiest definition I can give for an addiction. If you go to any village and you're asking for, uh, since we're in Ibo land, you're asking for Namdi, Namdi. They say, which Namdi? Namdi now. The son of, they say, who is Namdi? You say, that guy went to the drink. They say, ah, you for just talk, village drunk. He has a name, Namdi. But he formed the habit of drinking and now the habit has formed him. It has given him a name, village drunk. He has no identity anymore. He's identified by the wahala in his life. So an addiction is you forming a habit, and the habit turns around and forms you. The aspect I want to focus on this morning is, how do you know you are addicted? Now, this is a self-measuring scale I want you to use. I don't want you to be a traffic warden. You know, traffic wardens stand at the same spot. And then when cars come, in the morning you pass and they are there, waving. Go like this. Go like this. People pass and go. You come back in the evening, he's still standing there. Go like this. Go like this. Some of us come to gatherings like this and we're traffic wardens. When we hear something, say, ah, I wish a Jane did alive around the Nashi for hear this thing. You know, when, when, when Bankole was speaking earlier and he made a statement, somebody shouted, tell them. I wanted the person. Now them, you come to hear for, now yourself, you come to hear for, say, tell them. Who be the them? You don't ever go any naming ceremony, they carry picking up, say the name of this child, them. You don't ever see that one. It doesn't happen. So measure yourself this morning. Amen. Amen. All right, so the first way to know that a behavior is probably an addiction in your life is if you have broken promises. You made promises to yourself, to your spouse, to your God, to your dog, that you won't do this again, and you did it again. It's probably an addiction. Second indicator is failed attempts to change. 
You've made attempts to change. You've made attempts to change. Sometimes you stick with it for two weeks and then boom, you're back there. Sometimes it's one month and then you're right back there. Sometimes it's 10 months and you're right back there. If you have failed attempts to change around any behavior, it's probably an addiction. Number three, entitlement. Entitlement is one of the biggest expressions of addiction. When you feel entitled to any particular behavior and you give yourself excuses so you can indulge, it's probably an addiction. Entitlement is that thing that makes a person drive badly, hit your car, and before you speak, they start shouting. You don't experience them. Now then go first begin to curse you. And what, what are they saying? You don't have a right to be on the road. I'm the only one who has to be here or I'm the one who's allowed to be here. Entitlement is what our children do. Most of you are single, but we have children that you have told them like 55,000 times, when I'm on the phone, do not interrupt me. It is when you're on the phone, the child will come. <laughs> mommy, mommy, mommy. One of my children, they say I should stop calling the name of which child did what. That because sometimes their friends are in the crowd. Then after the program, they call and say, so you do your mama this kind of thing. <laughs> so one of the children, who, she came to me one day, I was on the phone. Mommy, I said, Mommy, mommy, I said, I'm on the phone. She won't go away. So I, I said to the person, please excuse me. What is it? <laughs> I'm feeling sleepy. <laughs> oh, I wanted to slap the little man. You don't know where the bed is. But that's entitlement right there. Whoever is at the other end of the line, I don't care. I'm more important. And right now, you must pay me attention. That's entitlement. Entitlement is a man caught in adultery after 17 years of marriage. And what he had to say was, ah, my wife, why are you making such a big deal? I've been faithful for 16 years. So he felt that 16 years was leverage for cheating once. I hope you know that if I put this um, handkerchief here and I, and I leave it here and you come and you're attracted to it and something says, you take it. Then you say, ah, no, I had the God picking. I know the thief. You pass. You come back a second time. The thing is still drawing your eye. You look at it. You pass, I be God picking. If you pass 19 times, you are good. If you come on the 20th time and you pick this hanky, what does that make you immediately? A thief. Who remembers the 19 times? Nobody. So every time you drop the button, every time you drop the ball, you start counting from one again. That's how we do in recovery in addiction. If you say, I've been sober 10 days, 13 days, 90 days, the moment you relapse, we start counting from day one again. We don't remember the other 39 days you stayed sober. Nobody counts those times for you. So you've got to stay on your game. Praise God. So how many have I given you? Number one. Mm? Two. Three. Number four, negative consequences. When you've had negative consequences over a certain behavior, you've lost relationships, you have lost time and stuff. And the panel that was interviewing was sitting and the, the who the, the applicants, I think, the applicants were coming one by one. What they didn't know was that the owner of the Fortune 500 company was seated in a corner observing. The panel was judging parameters like IQ, like uh, blah, blah, blah. he was watching for carriage. He was watching for comportment. How do you comport yourself? And there was a guy he zeroed in on who incidentally turned out to be the best performer in the parameters they were checking. And so the last test was to go into a, a, a restaurant, their restaurant, and eat. Everybody had been told, bring your money. So uh, the place is like Mama Cass. I don't know if you have Mama Cass here, but you go from one end of the counter, take whatever you want, and when you get to the end, you pay. So everybody was doing that, and the guy that owned the company was sitting at the corner again watching. And people were taking their food, and he kept his eye on this guy. The guy picks the things he wants, then he gets to these little tubs of butter that you use once, and it's done. You know those tiny little things they give you? He got to that, it was 10 cents, 10 kobo. He picked it and he looked around surreptitiously. Anybody, they look me, nobody, they look me, and he put it in his pocket. Got to the end of the line, paid for his food, and didn't pay for that, 10 cents. That cost him the job. The owner of the company said, ah, nah, thief be this. You think that's the first time he did something like that? No, 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 it caught up with him. It always catches up. Tell you something, every addict lives on borrowed time. When your time is up, I don't care 
where you're at, who you are, it's going to show you up. I don't have the time to go into examples in the Bible now. Make I just go. So how many I don't give no now? What's number four? Okay. Number five is ineffective prayer. You pray, 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 pray. Come no by yourself. Say the prayer, no pass you silly. As you pray something, they tell you, you, you follow. For that people, they pray if you open mouth. Like um, Stan said, they were, what did you say they used to call you? Eh, or bo, the devil will tell you, you, or bo, guinea, whatever. That's what you are. You don't pray. You would not be, you go do this thing yesterday. Nobody you go do this thing day before yesterday. Wait till they talk here. Get out of here. So you will not be able to pray. Ineffective prayer is an indicator. Number six is lost opportunities. Did I give you lost opportunities? Lost opportunities. One of the greatest preachers to ever rise out of this country. The son came to my office. And he said, I know I've been called to ministry. But I dare not go near the pulpit. See, I'm doing a job that pays me big money. But I have no fulfillment or satisfaction. Because I know I'm in the wrong place. I said, why won't you go to the pulpit? He said, because I have an addiction. It will show me up. It will shame me off the pulpit. He said to me, if you can help me, I'll bring my junior brother. He's worse than me. Addiction is no respecter of persons. Any door that opens, it will shove its way in and take over. That's how it operates. All right? So, he has lost the opportunity to be the best that he could be. To, to function in the office, what he was crafted for, what he was built for, he's lost that opportunity. Okay? Um, final one, I think I, think I don't give enough. Number six, number seven is your heart knows. You can fit deceive everybody, but you cannot fit deceive yourself. Do you understand me? He can lie to everybody. No! When they bring them to my rehab, <laughs> they are high. Once I look there, I know say this person don't, he don't enter IRA. <laughs> the Jamaicans call it IRA. Everything is good with my world. He's in that zone, but he's telling me, no, they're lying against me. I don't take anything. I don't take use anything. <laughs> One man brought his son. They had, they had expelled him from school and said if he didn't go to rehab, he wasn't going to come back to school. And the guy was in final year. The guy said it's not possible. He came to my rehab with his two sons-in-law. He's a very controlling man. Two son in law, that is, in daughter them, their husband, in command them to come rehab with them. Then follow and come with the boy. He said, It's not true. They're lying against my son. Nothing contaminated can come from my loins. I look the man loin well, well. I say, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. As they talk, they're they careful. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean by that? When the man don't rake, 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 finish, we took the boy aside and said, Boy, see, see, as your papa, they shout, they, You know, we know. He said, Let me just tell you the truth. My father doesn't even know that. I'm not only a user, I'm a dealer. His lies were definitely contaminated. You can't lie to yourself. As you are lying, your brain is short-circuiting. You know, I read electrical engineering. Why has they touch? Something they tell you, oh boy. You know that's the way they talk now, nonsense. So it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. So those are the seven pointers to measuring. If you are addicted, score yourself. Oh, yeah? That should go away, they chew anyhow. They tell you, say, stop. You say, ah, no. If I know, child, no, if you can, can, can concentrate. Bros. <laughs> Sister, check out. That, the way you reschedule spiritual things to accommodate your golf. Check. Check. Score yourself over seven. How many you score? The truth is, even if you get only one right, whatever the behavior is you were thinking about that you ticked this one a day, that thing, that problem, is a controlling behavior. And those things will stand in the way of your being your best self. Can I tell you what I struggled with for many years? Mine was anger. Or oh, you didn't know anger is an addiction. Oh, what is an addiction? Every time you indulge, it releases the feel-good hormones into your brain, the reward centers of the brain. It is carried by adrenaline and dopamine. Dopamine is where we get the word dope from. 
dope is what they call cocaine, heroin, crack. Those are dope substances. They, they dope your brain into a stupor. So every time you get angry and you rage and people back off, you enjoy the power it gives you. So it becomes an addiction. Anger is an addiction. All those people waste a beaver say, ah, now so we do for our family if we vex, we we'll start it. Now when we just cut that finish, then we'll go normal. Hey, bros, it's an addiction running your lineage. It's called iniquity. But that's the real meaning of iniquity. It's the bent towards a wrong behavior that runs in a lineage. That's the real meaning of iniquity. Did you understand that? So I want you to score yourself. Not only for a year, because she no agree, you agree, say you score seven over seven. Mm. When you reach out, tell yourself, na seven I score, ma check myself. You know that thing you do that you call, oh, I just love to work. It's called work addiction. There's a thin line between hard work and work addiction. Check it. You say you're going on holiday like stands and then you take your laptop with you. You go on the beach with your children. Children are running the water. You are on the recliner, pressing laptop. But you're supposed to be on holiday. That's a work addict. So my own was anger. And, and I didn't think it was a problem. But you see, I used to pray up in the morning. Father, I'm going out. Go with me. Daughter of Zion, full of the power of God. Five minutes. All those mad people, where they drive, like say they send them. The one just cross my front. Idiot, you're a fool. Then I'll remember, Reverend. Christian. My sanctification, I lost it five minutes after leaving my house. And we go there, there they curse ourselves. One day, me and one man don't block ourselves like this. And they look at daggers from my eyes. How dare you drive like that? They say, idiot, fool. They say, yeah. I was so angry that day when I finished, I was heaving from the effort of abusing him. You know, when you are angry, it blinds you, you become an idiot because my brain was not functioning well that time. That's what addiction does to you, it suspends your limbic system. So, I don't know to say the man, no, they cost me back as they normally do. Because you cost one person. One day I was telling a man, your trafficator is on. He didn't walk. He thought I was abusing him. That's the immediate response. You know, so the man wasn't costing me back, he was just looking at me. When I finished and I was heaving and I was looking at him, the guy did this. Good afternoon, Reverend Christie. Yeah! Oh! Her, I died! I died in the car, died from shame! He did not only know my name, he knew the title. Look, can you imagine that they invited me to his church? And they're introducing me to this great woman, a guy coming to preach to us. She's such a firebrand. I forgot to greet Pastor Jerry as I start. PJ, no vex. Okay, so, see. Hey, this woman is coming to... What will he say in his mind? Ooh. This is what they call people for traffic. Hey, this one, a reverend, I may be Pope. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. I had, to, I had to go to God and say to him, Lord, I must deal with this. No, 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 enough. Make the change. Transform. That's what revamp means. Transform. Transfigure, change. My, our, our rehab center is called 180 degrees. And our, our slogan is make that you turn. Come on for this direction where they go turn. Go back to when your head clear, where they see straight. Nobody the one where they <laughs> smoke ganja, tell me you are inspired. <laughs> you will be inspired very well and very soon you experience what they call love diminishing. Prophetic mothers, a mother that loves, prays, direct and not just spiritual growth and development. The wings of fire.